Okay, so in this video, we are looking at monochromatic color grading, which is quite famous in the works of the director Wong Kar Wai and also the recent Batman film. So stick around to the end because I have a little surprise for you. Today I have a shot here that is in a similar setting as my reference image which is in a confined space or indoors and the light tubes are also in the shot. So I'm going to show you how I match the colors from Wong Kar Wai's film but before we get into the video, let's talk about camera specs first. This clip was shot on the Sony FX3 in S-Log3 10-bit 422. If you don't understand what I just said, basically that's the highest level of color sampling and dynamic range that the Sony FX3 can offer. You can find the exact clip from the link in my description to try it out yourself. And now let's get into the video. Starting off as usual, I got my clip here in the color tab and we will skip through the clip a little to find our hero frame. Okay, so this right here should be it. We have a good amount of skin here to nail our skin tones and also the highlight and shadows are all in frame. So once that's done, we'll start building our node tree and I will build the whole node tree first then label it afterwards. Let's start with one serial node followed by three parallel nodes with a mixer then two more serial nodes at the end. So this grid will have a total of seven nodes and we'll start labeling the nodes. Node 1 is primaries Node 2 is Hue versus. Node 3 is Look. Node 4 is Exposure. Node 5 is Mixer. Node 6, Color Space Transform. And lastly, Node 7, Grain. The first node is for color correction, and these parallel nodes are for grading. Then I have a conversion node here, and finally one post grading node. Now that everything's ready, we can start grading. So we start on the color space transform node. What this does is basically convert our S-Log3 footage into a Rec. 709 color space. I don't know if I'm oversimplifying it, but drop a comment if you want me to explain more about color space. So I'll select my input color space as Sony S Gamma 3 Cine and Gamma as Sony S-Log3. Then for output color space is Rec. 709 and Gamma 2.4. Once this is done, you can see that our footage is converted with more contrast and saturation. But this is just a conversion, I will still need to make some color corrections for the mistakes I made when shooting. That's where my first note comes in. So I'll call this primaries because I'll only be using the things in this section for this note. I'm going to pull the gain down a little because the whole thing is a little too bright right now. Right about 0 0.95. And same for my lift. I'm pulling it down to make it darker. Right now everything is looking a little pale, so I want to drag up my saturation to somewhere that looks about right. Let's make it 60. Okay, so the shadows are a little magenta. I'm going to shift the tint to greens till I get somewhere neutral. Negative 8 should be okay. I'm also going to increase the temperature to around 100 so that I can warm up the shot. For my hue node, I'm going to fix its skin tone a little bit by going into the hue versus hue and drag up the orange hue. Let's leave it at 5. I'm also going to go into my hue versus saturation to pull down my yellows. We can go a bit too far, then we're going to pull it back. Now for my look node, I'm going to push the greens using the gain wheel. And to correct the shadows, I'm going to push some magenta into it. Then I'm going to move on to my log wheels and correct the skin tones a little more using the mid-tones. I also want to correct my highlights because it's looking a bit too green now. So I push some magenta into the highlights. You can just shift it around until the highlights look white. Now 
it looks like the shadows are also a little too green for me so I'll just pull a little bit magenta into the shadows I'm also going to drop the saturation so that the green doesn't pop up too much. Let's do 40. I'm going to put the reference side by side so that we can compare the look. Right now it's a bit too bright and that's where my exposure adjustment note comes in. I'm going to drop the gain and maybe also a little gamma. I'm going to go into my lock views and drop the shadow until it matches with my reference. And I'll do the same for the highlights. Here's the before and after of this note. For my final note, I'm going to add in some film grain to blend the colors together and also to make it look like it was shot on film. Hipsters, yeah. You can toggle the grain only to see the grain itself. I'm going to choose the 60mm 500T for very rough and huge grain to really push that vintage look. So let's turn off all the notes and quickly go through it one by one. We use a color space transform to convert the footage to Rec 709, color corrected with the primaries, did a bit of adjustment to the skin with hues, added in the green tone on the look node, dimmed down the exposure, and added film grain to blend it all together. So this is the grid side by side with the reference. I also did a version of this grid in the Batman 2022 signature orange but I didn't want to make it the star of this tutorial because the scene itself is not really suitable for this orange monochromatic grid. Okay besides that, I know some of you might be thinking that this grid is ruining the skin tones and yes, that's true but it's a creative decision. If the director wants to rescue the skin tones a little bit it's definitely possible to do so on my 10-bit footage. So there are many other ways to do this grade depending on how you want the final look to turn out. Do try and explore all the tools in DaVinci Resolve so that you can be more specific on the look or feeling that you're trying to create. Overall, I'm quite happy with this color recreation to be honest. I might make more videos on analyzing and recreating grades from films on my channel so subscribe to stick around. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial till the end and I'll see you soon. Bye!